Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. It is wonderful to be back, isn't it? And to see your lovely faces. For those of us that are joining on YouTube, welcome. It is great to have you here. So whether you're online or in person, it is wonderful to be together to worship. Uh, my name's Mel, and this is Peter, and we're the ministry team here at Albert Street Uniting. Um, just a reminder that we do need to be masked while seated and to sign in through the QR coding app. Um, you will notice that Peter and I take our masks off and anyone with a speaking part may need to do that while they're up here, but we'll always be masked when we're sitting down. And a very special welcome to the Stoddard family and to little Imogen who's here for baptism today. Welcome, Tracy and Ryan. And look at her sitting there. <laughs> um, it is wonderful to worship. So let us start with our call to worship. Come, all who are foolish enough to believe the kingdom of God is at hand. Come, all who are wise enough to know that the kingdom is beyond our reach. God, God welcomes, welcomes the, the foolish and, and the wise. wise. Come, all who are blinded by fear and prejudice. Come, all who have experienced healing and hope. God, God welcomes, welcomes us for, for who we, we are and, and loves us into being a new creation. creation. Come, all who have the faith to move mountains. Come, all who have faith the size of a mustard seed. God, God welcomes, welcomes all who have faith and all who have doubt and, and everyone, everyone in between. between. Come, all who dare to listen for God's voice. Come, all who hope to lead and serve with wisdom. Come, Come let, let us, us worship, worship in, in spirit and, and in, in truth. truth. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Creator God, for the land on which we meet. From time beyond our reckoning, the traditional custodians of this land, the Yagara and the Turrbal people, have lived in harmony with their environment and nurtured this land with a deep and abiding care. We give thanks for their stewardship and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. We also give thanks for the multitudes who have recently arrived here from many different cultures and countries and who now call this place home. Help us, O oh God, to live together in fellowship, to share our stories of hope and justice and peace, and to further the work of reconciliation in this land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, today is the third Sunday in our preaching series, Servant Leadership. Each week we have been following the lecturing readings and discovering what they reveal to us about how we are called to lead and to serve in our worshipping congregation and indeed in the wider community to which we belong. Today we will learn that we are called to lead and serve with wisdom. Proverbs 9.10 instructs us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, Make the most of the time that is given to you. Now, I'm not sure those writers had a global pandemic in mind when they were writing, but it certainly makes sense in our context today. It seems for many of us, we fear the wrong things and so end up making foolish choices. It seems for many of us, we waste the time that we have and we could certainly do with a bit of wisdom. And so this is our prayer today. God, help us to be wise. Help us to lead and serve with wisdom. May God be with you. And also with you. Friends, we light the Christ candle this morning to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and in him there is no darkness. May the light of Christ help us to discover wisdom in our leading, in our serving and in our following the ways of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Folks, we invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together our first hymn this morning. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Here in this place, a new light is streaming. 
Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the lime and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so weak and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt of the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this space the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together, fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Please be seated. Let us continue our worship as we bring our prayers of adoration and confession to God. Let us pray. God of wisdom, would you forgive us our folly? Forgive us for the times we make poor choices, for choosing what is popular rather than what is good, for choosing what is convenient rather than what is important, for choosing what is nice rather than what is kind. God, would you help us to discern your way? Forgive us for the times when we fail to listen, for the times that we ignore the cries of the hurting and the lost, for the times our own opinions and our egos take attention away from the concerns of others. For the times when we fail to follow your commandments, for the times we think that we know better. God, help us to hear you. Forgive us for the times when we have resorted to violence, for the times we have engaged in gossip, Forgive us for the times we have objectified others. And forgive us for the times we have not taken care of your creation, as well as the times that we have acted in fear instead of love. God, would you help us to lead and to serve with wisdom. Amen. Children of God, hear the good news, news that seems too good to be true. By the grace of God found in Jesus Christ, our sins are indeed forgiven. Thanks be to God. 
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Could I invite you to stand as is our practice, hand over heart, and just with the people around you, greet them with the peace of Christ. So I invite you all to stand here as we sing together a hymn that reminds us that the love of God is always with us. Just some, a few announcements about some of the things that have been happening in our community this week. Um, as we do, uh, Stephen, if you want to stand and give us a wave, um, Stephen's helping us out in the organ this morning. Greg, uh, regular organist, has not been able to, to be here this morning, so thank you for that, Stephen. We can't see you back there, but he's, he's the one doing it all. We're not just, it's not a recording where we just press play. Um, he's working hard back there. Thank you. Stephen, and uh, a special welcome to, we've discovered over the last couple of weeks that we have more than 100 people watching online as these videos are uh, uploaded during the week, including people from Beirut and people from England who have made contact with us, so a special welcome to you wherever you are um, across the internet. Um, upstairs next door on level six, we've done some remodeling, we have a new office administrator, um, Lauren, and we will, uh, you'll come to know her over the next weeks and months, but we've arranged some of the furniture and we're, that front room is now becoming a reception area. So when you do come up to level six, you'll notice some big changes um, and a, a special thank you to all who were involved with that process as well. As we're all aware, we're wearing masks um, for most of the time now. Um, please continue to be listening to the latest advice. Uh, we will continue to worship in this space as we are allowed, as we are permitted, but, you know, there's every chance and all the indications are that we're going to be going in and out of lockdown at various 
um, stages from here probably till the end of the year. Keep your mask with you and be mindful of the people that you are not seeing. Uh, give them a call, send them a text, let them know that even though they cannot be here in this space, um, that they are dearly loved and, and we miss them. We are having morning tea. We're able to have morning tea even with these lockdowns. It'll be next door um, after the service. We have to sit while we are um, eating and drinking. Not that people are walking around eating and drinking anyway, but uh, please be seated when next door and, and we will have some fellowship there. And of course, the baptism family and friends are, are most welcome to attend as well. We have some Praxis teams starting. We've been talking about that um, over the last few weeks. It will make more sense as uh, time unfolds, but basically Praxis teams are an invitation for people from this congregation and others to um, have a mindful and intentional presence in some of the services and ministries that Wesley Mission Queensland offer. For example, at Community Meal, Emergency Relief, Art from the Margins, even here at Open Church. If you'd like to be a part of some of those ministry teams, please see Mel or myself after the service or send us an email. Not only will teams be invited to, to be a pre prayerful presence during those services, but we will also be having time to reflect on what that means for us. So Praxis teams are not just about serving the community, but they're also about our discipleship, where we'll be learning about uh, the ministry that Jesus calls us to, we'll be reflecting on that, and then we'll, we'll put that learning into practice as we serve in the community. If you'd like to know more, please see Mel or myself. Coming up in a couple of weeks' time, on the 27th of August, the young adult ministry here from Al Albert Street is having its first murder mystery night. It sounds quite macabre, doesn't it? But it's going to be fun. Um, the ministry team will be serving and uh, young adults will be participating and it's going to be heaps of fun. If you'd like to know more about that, I think, even though it's past the RSVP, give us a wave, Hannah. Um, please see Hannah if you'd like to be a part of that and um, she'll give you all the instructions. And prayer meetings are happening via Zoom now. Crazy, right? So tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., you can still be in your PJs. No one's going to know because you can have the camera turned off. Uh, we have people from our congregation and, and from a, we have people from New South Wales joining in as well. So um, people can join in from wherever they are to be part of that, that prayer time. Again, please see Mel after the service and she can send you the Zoom link and you can join with us 7 a.m., I know it's, it's a crazy way to start the week, but God is up, ready and waiting to hear our prayers. And Open Church returns this Friday. Now, I know the regulars in the community are thinking that means we're going to go back into full lockdown. Every time we've said we're going to have Open Church, suddenly there's the virus spreads. But we're hoping that we will be here Friday between 10 and 2. The doors of the church will go open for people to come in for prayer and we'll also be having a communion service at 12.30 as well. Um, Dr. Ian Airy, our Chair of Council, is going to share with us some of the um, discussions and decisions that were made at our recent Council meeting. The Council met last Monday night and I'll just give you a taste of some of the items which were on our agenda. COVID, as Peter has mentioned, is front of mind for all of us across the community, but it's uh, much more challenging for uh, our uh, mission uh, and the services we offer across the mission. Uh, we care for some of the most vulnerable people in the community and that impacts the way we offer that care. The, uh, all, everyone's affected, our clients are affected, the lockdowns really uh, make it very difficult for their care. Uh, they're isolated from their families, their families don't have as much contact with them as they normally would and that makes things difficult for the families and also for our residents in aged care and our, the, the other, our other clients. Also, things are very difficult for our staff. And I have to say that uh, the performance of our staff has been exemplary. We have good policies in place and they're following our, the, those policies to the letter. As a result of that, touch wood, to, at this point in time, we've had none of our residents in our aged care homes affected by the, uh, by the virus. So we're very pleased with that. But that's a reflection of the policies in place and the care that our, our staff offer. Uh, the uh, vaccination is very important, as you all know. 
The residents in our homes, 90% of them are vaccinated. We have other facilities called specialist disability accommodation, which is for people with uh, severe disabilities who are under the age of 65. 85% of those residents are also vaccinated. Our staff are being vaccinated with uh, increasing numbers as we progress. You see on the uh, screen uh, the uh, gratitude wall. This is an installation uh, which is at uh, Weller Gardens at Chermside and it's well worth a uh, trip out. You can see in the top left hand quadrant uh, th there are some stones, they're stones and they've been painted different colours and various people uh, associated with the uh, mission have been offered uh, to write something on those stones and you can't see it very clearly but there are words like love, uh, family, uh, yeah, and uh, staff and so on and so forth on those stones. And they've been put together uh, by an artist to, uh, to create this uh, mural, which is an absolutely wonderful installation, and I commend it to you. It's well worth a trip out to uh, uh, Chermside to look at it. But it sort of acknowledges the resilience, strength and innovation of our people. Next slide. Resley Mission's been involved with uh, retirement living for getting on to 20 years now. And it's mainly been focused at uh, Weller Gardens with uh, Weller on the Park. In uh, 2015, we started another facility at uh, Cinnamon uh, Village, and that uh, facility is known as Rosemount Retirement uh, Village. It's come in two stages. On the left of the screen, you can see the completion, uh, stage one, which is almost completed, and uh, that uh, has about 70 units in it. They're about 75% occupied now. And that has allowed us to move on to stage two. And uh, stage two will have um, 50 units in it. The board, uh, the executive leadership team has done a lot of work to uh, uh, ensure that it's uh, financially appropriate to proceed. The board has examined it in very close detail and have recommended to the council that we proceed with uh, stage two. The council has endorsed that recommendation and that's now going to the Finance, Investment and Property uh, Board of the Synod. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, commencing that uh, next stage and that will, the work will probably begin in January next year. Next uh, slide. Our, um, our uh, council underwent a skills matrix, which is a self-assessment. No one person on a board or a council has all the skills required uh, for the work of that board or council. And so we all bring different talents to it and we've assessed what talents and skills we bring to those, uh, to the uh, table on the council. We've, as a result of that, we can then analyse a, uh, a gaps analysis and uh, work out what gaps are missing. That leads to two things. One is education. We're going to embark on an education program to uh, try to strengthen our weaknesses. And also in the new year, we'll be looking for new members uh, of the council and uh, we'll be seeking uh, members who'll be able to fill those skills gaps. If you want to talk to me about anything else the council's doing, please contact me afterwards. Thank you, Ian. As we've been doing um, throughout this uh, series on, on leadership, we've been asking our good friend, uh, Reverend Graham Keach, to share a very brief reflection about his experience with leading and serving uh, according to the topic of each week. And for this week, we have a short video of Graham talking about his experience leading and serving with wisdom. For me, leading with wisdom requires two things of me. The first is that I slow down. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 21, it speaks of wisdom crying out on the busiest corner. <clears throat> How easy it is to rush past her. If I'm to have any chance of finding wisdom, I have to slow down have to take the time to think carefully through all the issues that are involved. Not only do I have to pay attention to my thinking, I've also got to pay attention to my feelings. What, what am I feeling about this? What am I being drawn to? What am I resisting? What am I reacting to? And what's going on with all that? And not only to my thinking, my feeling, I also have to listen deeply into my gut, into that, that deep knowing where God's spirit and my spirit are intertwined. And for me, when those three things, when my gut knowing, when my 
feelings, my heart, when my head are in line, then perhaps I'm starting to touch wisdom and find some wisdom. The second is that I listen deeply. In Ecclesiastes, there's this wonderful little story, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 13 to 15. I have also seen this example of wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few people in it. A great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. I, I've got a memory of years ago in one of my very early uh, congregations. Um, I can't remember what the meeting was about. There was a, a big meeting. We're trying to sort out some stuff and find some way forward. There's all these different opinions and all these voices. And there was at this meeting uh, a lady and she was older. She was quite small, uh, quite quiet. Um, if one spoke to her, she really often felt that she didn't have much to offer. And yet in that meeting, it was her voice that brought wisdom. In my current context, I get to meet with people from different cultural backgrounds to mine, different religious backgrounds, different life experiences. And I'm constantly reminded how narrow and even blind and biased my experience and my view can be. So if I'm to have any chance of finding wisdom, I've got to listen deeply. I've got to listen to the voices who, who differ from me, uh, from the voices of even religious faith other than mine. I've got to listen to the hidden voices, the quiet voices that, that, are, that are rarely paid attention to. Because there's a bigger story and, and there's, there's bigger insight than I can currently see. So for me, the only chance I have of leading with wisdom is to slow down and to listen deeply. Thank you. Each week during our series on servant leadership, we will be taking time for silent reflection, time to reflect on the way that we serve and lead with respect to the different roles and relationships and responsibilities that impact our living. We also want each of you to take time to reflect on whether God might be calling you into leadership or into service um, in the church, or whether God may be calling the person next to you. So we shall have a minute's silence now and pray that the Spirit of God would begin to speak. Amen. We're now going to have our scripture readings. If I could get Natalie and Bill to come forward to share our readings this morning. First reading is First Kings 2. 10 to 12, and 3, 3 to 14. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord 
walking in the statutes of his father David. Only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer, offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honour all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading from John 6, 51 to 58. And Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate. And they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bill. Please stand as you're able as we sing our next song, Ancient Words. Holy words, long pre- 
reserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world, where'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing we have come with open hearts, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice, who oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart, who let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing we have come with open hearts, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts. Grab a seat. Let us pray. God, as we gather now in this community and watching online, may your spirit of wisdom and grace abound. May there be more of you and less of me in the things that I say. And may we each and every one learn to lead and serve with wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, this is not going to come as much of a surprise, but I've done some pretty dumb things in my life. I can hear that laughter there, by the way, on the side. I've done some pretty dumb things in my life. Two of them have involved a cockatoo. When I was about seven or eight, I went to, my folks took me to Magnetic Island, which is just off the coast of Townsville. I know some people here have been there just recently. And there was a, at that time, there was like a, a, a bird life sanctuary there. And there was a big squawking cockatoo in this big cage right at the front with a big sign saying, do not stick your fingers in the cage. So, I guess I saw that more as a challenge than anything else. And so the first thing I did, mum and dad, the way they tell the story, is I went straight up and stuck my finger in the cage. Uh, and the cockatoo came and said hello. Took a huge big hunk out of my finger. You think cockatoos are loud? If there was a screaming contest that day, I would have won. Jumping forward 20 years, I'm in the Blue Mountains working as a youth worker and we're driving around a winding road and there's a flock of cockatoos on the side of the road and the car scared them and they all flew off. One of them flew straight in front of the car. I slammed on the brakes but still heard this faint thud. I thought, oh no. So myself and my friend hopped out of the car and sure enough there was this like cockatoo lying unconscious on the road. We called up Wires, which is like this wildlife service. What do we do? And they said, look, bring the cockatoo into us and we'll fix it up. So we did. Picked up the cockatoo. My friend held it on his lap. We had a blanket from out the back that we laid down. Turns out, though, the cockatoo really wasn't unconscious. <laughs> it was just slightly stunned. 
So about two minutes down the road, it woke up. Uh, you, you'd think it would have been grateful. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a cockatoo flying inside a moving car, but it was pretty crazy there for a while. I don't know if it was the same cockatoo from 20 years earlier, but it looked familiar. Um, pretty dumb things, right, to do with a cockatoo. Um, but here's the thing. King Solomon, who's supposed to be the wisest person who ever lived, made a decision one day that seemed, when you first read it, a pretty dumb thing to do. And the decision was this that in order to, to satisfy a custody dispute, two mothers claiming the same baby, the decision of the wise king was to cut the baby in half and give half to each mother. Now, I don't know if you've ever um, sit, watched Judge Judy or anything on TV. Sometimes there's custody issues that come before a court. I've never heard of any judge ever saying, divide the baby in two. Um, but apparently that's what wisdom looks like. So let's have a look at this story and see what actually happens here. So the story wasn't part of our scripture reading, but it's the next story that happens. King Solomon, the wisest of all people, has before him a decision he has to make. But he, the wisdom that he knows is that he understands that anyone who seeks to lead with wisdom must begin with love. So the story is this. Two women living in the same house give birth to a baby boy three days apart. The story tells us that one night, one of the babies tragically dies. The mother rolls over and suffocates the baby and it dies. But what the mother does in her grief, she swaps the baby with the other baby who is asleep and alive and well. And so the mother of the, the baby that is still alive wakes up in the morning and sees this, uh, this dead baby but realises when she takes a closer look, it's not her child. And so goes to the other mother and they have this big dispute and who's, who's the mother, whose baby is the live baby? They go to the king for the king's wisdom to solve. And this is the king's solution. He says, bring me a sword and we're going to, the only way to solve this issue, the only way to see justice, the sword of justice is we will cut the baby in two, they can have half each. Well, of course, as the story unfolds, the, the mother of the living child says, no, no, don't do this. And of course, you, we need to understand how dramatic a situation that is. To say no to the king is punishable by death in and of itself. But the love that this mother has for child is such that she would rather put her own life at stake. She says, no, give the baby to the other woman. That's how much her love was. And of course, then... King Solomon says, okay, this must be the real mother, we'll give the baby to her. Now we can say, looking back at that, that that's a very wise thing for a king to do because he knew that the mother's love would come to the fore. But another way of looking at that is to say wisdom should always begin with love. Wisdom should always be subservient to love. If the mother's love had not spoken up at that point, all we would have is a baby cut in two. It's one thing to, to claim and to pray for wisdom, but the wisdom that we long for must always begin with love. We have a, a story, or sorry, a letter that Paul writes to the church in Ephesus where he encourages everyone to have gratitude, to give thanks in all things. For many of us, when we think of serving others, often the word gratitude is something we expect the other to show us. Paul is saying that we should give thanks in all things. When we are serving others, we should be grateful for the opportunity to do so. Giving thanks. I'm sure many of us have uh, perhaps have been in a context, a home, or maybe we do it in our own home, where we give thanks for a meal that we have. We give thanks, we say grace before we eat a meal. When uh, Jen and I were first married, we had six teenagers in the house and, uh, at that time, and they would often bring friends over for dinner. Sometimes our family dinner would have up to 12 people or more, carrying on, raucous laughter, noise everywhere, 
the great way to get everyone to be quiet is to say to the new person who's the guest at the table, okay, it's your turn to say grace. Um, apparently, it can be quite intimidating as a teenager going to someone's house where two of the parents are ministers, uh, but we used to love doing that. So whoever was new, that's their first time in our house, carrying on, laughter, and we say, okay, it's your turn to say grace, and everyone then quickly bows their heads and holds hands. Sometimes we had the opportunity to hear the most amazing, beautiful, honest prayer. Sometimes it was just this awkward silence. And, and friends then, the next habit was when friends came over for dinner was they had this ritual when they sat down, they knew they'd go shot not, and they put their finger on their nose and that means they, they didn't have to say grace. But it became a wonderful ritual in our family to say grace, to give thanks. I wonder though, if we understand gratitude as a discipline, what it looks like to say grace, to say a prayer of thanks, not just for a meal that we share, but for a sunset that we look at. To give thanks for an opportunity to walk a dog. To give thanks to say grace for an opportunity to mow the lawn or to do the dishes. Back when we lived in the Blue Mountains, we had a sink that overlooked the bush. It was just beautiful. And so we made a decision as a family not to use the dishwasher. How crazy is that? But rather to wash dishes looking out into the bush. And we had a candle set up on the windowsill. And we'd light a candle and, and doing the dishes became a moment of thanks, a moment of prayer. Washing the dis dishes reminded me that God cleanses us from our sin, a little bit like we learned in the baptism this morning. Scrubbing the pans reminded me that sometimes forgiveness is hard work. Putting things in the drying rack reminded me that healing sometimes takes time. And so doing the dishes became a moment of thanks, a moment of gratitude, a discipline. It was an invitation for me to see the world differently giving thanks in all things. It became a hermeneutic, a way of seeing things. It became a discipline and a habit and a way of life. Paul invites us into that space. Learning to lead with wisdom begins with love. Learning to serve with wisdom begins with gratitude. But sometimes leading and serving with wisdom can seem very foolish. And this is the reading that comes to us from the book of John. We've been following John 6 for the last few weeks when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. And people are trying to make sense of this, but then he takes it the next step and he says, I'm the bread of life. If you want to have eternal life, you have to eat my flesh. The people who were there at the time, they just thought, this is crazy talk. I mean, we can look back on that now and think that Jesus is talking about communion or, or mass. But back when those first listeners heard this, it wouldn't have made any sense whatsoever. It doesn't stop Jesus saying it. Sometimes leading and serving with wisdom looks entirely silly, foolish. Thank goodness for that. It's, it's foolhardy, isn't it, to think that God loves everybody? Everybody? It's foolhardy, isn't it, to think that God might love me? All the things that I've said and done, the way I've hurt and injured other people, God loves me. That's just, that's just foolish. And yet that is the heart of the gospel. The wisdom of God seems like foolishness to others. There's a, a really powerful story called The Legend of the Fisher King. Some of you may know it. The story of a fool who shows love to a king. The story is this, that the, the young prince who is to be king is led out into the forest one night and the idea, the tradition in that country was to spend a night in the forest alone that the prince would discover the courage that he would need to become the king. And in that night, alone in the forest, as the, the noises in the dark are beginning to um, cause fear, the young prince has a vision and it's a vision of a fire and in the fire, he sees the Holy Grail, the cup of Christ. And a voice comes from the flame and says, for the one who holds the Grail, 
they will bring healing to the hearts of others. And the young prince looked at the cup in the flame and the, the vision and the voice. He became so ecstatic about what he saw. He forgot himself and he thought in that moment that he was better than he was and that he was king already and he reached into the flame to take hold of the grail. But at that point, the grail vanished and all that was left was a hand in the flame and he was deeply wounded. Years went on and the wound became worse. And as the prince became the king, he was left alone with his suffering. He lost faith in God, he lost faith in others, he lost faith in himself. And alone with his woundedness and his sorrow and his pain, he began to be filled with sorrow to such an extent that he began to die. He knew that he needed the grail to find healing and so he sent his knights out to all the far reaches of the earth to find the holy grail to bring healing to his life but of course they could not find the grail it was beyond their reach and then one day into the castle came the fool and of course the fool didn't realize the king was a king he thought he was just a man and so he went straight up to the to the throne of the king and he said what ails you friend And the king looked at the fool and said, do you not know who I am? Do you not know what ails me? And he said, you just look so sad. How can I help? And the king said, I I just thirst. Please, I am thirsty. And so the fool looked around, he saw a cup and he filled it with water and he gave it to the king. And the king took a drink of the water and suddenly he felt the wound in his hand healed. And he felt the wound in his heart heal. And he looked at the cup and he realized this was the holy grail. The holy grail that all his knights and all his wisest and bravest had been searching for all these years. And he said to the fool, the holy grail, you have found the holy grail. How did you do what my bravest and my smartest could not? And the fool simply said, I wasn't looking for the holy grail. I was just giving you a drink of water. Friends, there is wisdom in serving. There is wisdom that comes to us when we understand that leading and serving begins with love and begins with gratitude and may look foolish at times. And I wonder if you might have the courage to be praying even now to think how God might be calling you into leadership, how God might be calling you into service. And how God might be showing you a wisdom that might begin with love, that might begin with gratitude, that might look foolish, but might help to see the transformation of the world and bring a cup to someone who's thirsty. Let's pray. We give thanks for this day, God, for baptisms, for Bible readings, for prayers and songs of praise that encourage us to enter into a calling to lead and to serve with wisdom and care that we might be foolish enough to lead and serve with love to lead and serve with gratitude and to usher in the kingdom of God in Jesus name we pray Amen. Folks, let us stand as we sing together, God of grace and God of glory. Say. 
sing of this hour. See the hosts of evil round us scorn your Christ, assail his ways. Fears and doubts too long have bound us, free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, for the living of these days. Cure your children's warring madness, bend our pride to your control. Shame your wanton selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the gift of your salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you whom we adore. Serving you whom we adore. Please be seated. On your way out the door today, there is the opportunity to give back to God something of the gifts that he, God has given to you. So the way we do that in this current COVID situation is on the left-hand side, as you walk out the door, you will see a tap-and-go facility. Um, if you tap that facility with your card, $25 will be taken out of it. Tap it twice, $50 will be taken, so on and so forth. On the right-hand side, there is what looks like a letterbox, a hole in the wall, where you can um, post your tithes and offerings and of course if you are online um, you can find the details for direct giving through the website but also through the newsletter if you subscribe to it. So let us pray for that offering. Holy God we thank you so much for the many ways in which you resource us um, and call us to give of what we have back to you and back to others. Would you use these tithes and these offerings? Indeed, would you use our entire living um, so that your name can be glorified? Amen. And we continue with our prayer for others, so let us continue in prayer. Bread of life, in you we find food for living uh, that sustains and nourishes our souls. We are so grateful for the provision you have given to us. Would you help us to remember to turn to you Whenever we are in need, trusting in your love that knows no limits. As you feed us with living water and bread to nourish our living, may your spirit rest on all who are hungry and thirsty today. We pray for those who live without the resources that they need to thrive, for those who are suffering under the weight of financial stress due to a lack of employment or needing to isolate or quarantine. We pray for those who don't have a safe place to rest their head at night. And we turn our hearts and our minds towards those who are malnourished and don't have enough food to sustain them. Lord, in your mercy, may your spirit rest upon them so that they may be filled. We pray for those who are empty emotionally, for those who are isolated, for those who are lonely or longing for companionship. We think of those whose mental health is taking a beating right now, those who are overwhelmed or grieving. Lord, in your mercy, may your spirit rest upon them so that they might be filled. 
And we pray for those who are spiritually empty, for those who are deeply troubled and don't know where to turn. We pray for those with a deep hunger for more, more purpose, more meaning. And we pray for those who do not know you yet, but so desperately need you. Lord, in your mercy, may your spirit rest upon them so that they may be filled. We thank you, God, for the abundant gifts that you've given to us. Um, And we pray that you would pour out your spirit on us also so that we might be filled with actions of radical hospitality and care and compassion so that we might also give out of that abundance that you've given to us, to others. Lord, in your mercy, may your spirit rest upon us so that we might be filled. In the name of Christ, our Saviour, we pray it. Amen. And would you join with me in the prayer uh, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Mel. Well, folks, our final hymn. It's been a bit of a marathon service today. Please stand as we sing our final hymn together. Lord of creation, to you be all praise. To you be all praise, most mighty your working, most wondrous your ways. Your glory and might are beyond us to tell, and yet in the humble of the humble you dwell. Lord of all power, I give you my will. In joyful obedience, your task to fulfill. Your bondage is freedom, your service is song. And held in your keeping, my weakness is strong. Lord of all wisdom, I give you my mind. Rich truth that surpasses our knowledge to find. What eye has not seen and what ear has not heard is taught by your spirit and shines from your word. Lord of all bounty, I give you my heart. I praise and adore you for all you impart. Your love to inspire me, your counsel to guide, your presence to shield me, whatever be tied. Lord of all being, I give you my all. If ever I leave you, I stumble and fall. But led in your service, your word to obey, I'll walk in your freedom to the end of the day. Folks, please join us for morning tea next door as you are able. And as we go forth this week, may we be aware of God's presence going before us to prepare the way ahead. In our leading and in our serving, may we know the transforming wisdom of God, remaking the world around us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Please be seated.